Hello and welcome to the channel Beefy Tech. This is one of my very first videos on the YouTube channel and I'm aiming to focus on technology and optimization for software and hardware. There's a little more to come but I thought I'd start out simple and that would be a basic NVIDIA Shadowplay optimization and just giving you the best settings that I have found to work for me. Anyway, first things first, I'm going to go to settings and I'm going to go to games and apps and I'm going to let you guys know to turn off automatically optimized newly added games and applications. This loves to change your settings without letting you know and it's overall just not great given it's going to generally default to ultra or high or just default to ray tracing being on and it won't be helpful in any competitive games, maybe outside of single player games. But anyway, I don't recommend it, make sure this is turned off in games and apps. With that said, if you go here, over here, you also have to make sure that the automatically download driver updates and let me choose when to install is the, uh, disabled because this could download a driver that is not great and you wouldn't even realize it. So I highly recommend you to keep this off and just let it notify you when a driver update is available and then you can choose yourself to update to it. Regardless, let's go into the NVIDIA settings and uh, start optimizing what's important. HUD layout and connect, not really important. These are mostly preferential. As for keyboard shortcuts, also extremely preferential. For recordings, this is the first important part. As the second you go here, you need to select a different drive, ideally, than the one you're playing on. Let's say you're playing Call of Duty and you're playing on your C drive, you would want to be recording this to your D drive. It's exactly what I'm doing, and it's an external SSD for me. The reason this is, is that if there's ever any bottlenecks, it will be the SSD. Let's say you have a SATA SSD, and you're recording on both, you could stand to lose performance. So I recommend that you record on different drives than you're playing on. Anyway, moving on. You have to turn off capture highlights. This automatically records and captures highlights, assuming you had a good play. I don't recommend it. It's just much better to use the instant replay feature and you yourself save the highlight that you want to save. So turn this off and let's keep going. For the broadcast live, I personally keep it off because I don't stream. But if you do stream, this is useful. I keep it off because it frees up the UI and it makes it easier to navigate when you need to just mess around with your recordings. Regardless, for the video capture, this is the very important part. So, for the instant replay length, the longer you go, the more frame rate you lose. Albeit it's not a lot, it's very minimal. If you have a fancy high-end rig, for example, or even a mid-tier rig, you wouldn't really notice the frame rate loss. But I personally keep it at 3 minutes for the instant replay, or 5 minutes. I wouldn't really go over 5, but you could do up to 10 and not lose an insane amount of frames. But just so you know, the second you go past 5, you're losing between 6 to 10-ish frames and below. It is actually very lossless, it is good, but I wouldn't recommend going much past 5. As for this, always leave the resolution to in-game, because that is by far the best quality. Whatever your monitor is at, record at that. Don't go under, especially. Over you can go, so you can do 4K if you're at 1440p for example, but it's a lot of extra work for the GPU to render in a resolution that isn't the same as your monitor. And for the frame rate, don't do 30. 30 looks abysmal on Shadowplay, so 60 FPS is what you stick with. It doesn't even affect performance. So if you record at 60 FPS, it won't make a big difference from 30. And it's a big visual upgrade. The last but not least is bitrate. And here, if you're recording just for recreational use, use 30,000 megabits, which is 30 right here. That will give you good enough quality to where you can watch back your gameplay, see if a guy was cheating, do whatever you need. But if you do anything more than that, I recommend at least 50,000 megabits per second. It will affect your frame rate more by a couple extra FPS. Not a lot, less than five for sure, I can tell you that. But it will look significantly better. I personally record at 50,000 megabits per second and it's perfect for me. Anyway, uh, going through these, notifications don't particularly matter. You can turn these off based on need. You can leave them on, they won't particularly bother you most of the time. Privacy control, you need to enable desktop, desktop capture to be able to do exactly what I'm doing now, and that is record the desktop. So you do that there, and it allows you to record the desktop then. As for performance monitoring, I recommend you turn this off, because it will uh, take a bit of extra performance to monitor your performance. And if you're doing that already anyway with, let's say, Task Manager or MSI Afterburner, this could just be an extra little taxing thing in the background that's running, so just turn it off, unless you really specifically want to use this. Something quite important that I forgot to mention while in the video capture section is that the bitrate also scales for audio quality. 
one thing that's important to know is that if you set it to 30,000 megabits per second, the video will look good enough for you to enjoy as a playback, just to, you know, have it for recreational use, but audio quality will be significantly lower than at 50 or 60 or 70. The higher you go in bitrate, the better the audio quality, the better the video quality, the more lossless the image is. So you have to keep in mind that while you do this, I recommend 50,000 for the best of both worlds, 70,000 if you want outer best quality, you could obviously go higher, but at that point you're absolutely massacring your frame rate. So 50,000 is what I'm recording at now, and this is how it sounds, this is how it is. My mic is not particularly great, but I'm recording with a headset mic, so just letting you guys know. Anyway, thank you for watching, and this has been it for the optimization video. If there's anything else you need to know, comment in the comment section, and if you would, please subscribe, I would highly appreciate it. Have a good day.